Welcome back to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca as the stage is set now for the Moto America Super Sport and Super Stock 600 class race. By the way, this is the only time that they're racing this weekend. Normally, they get to race two times at each event. So this one having huge implications in terms of the points championship. So without further ado, let's get Hannah in on this deal. Hannah, you're down on the grid right now. What's going on? I'm here with our pole sitter, Garrett Gerloff. Garrett, there's only one race this weekend to make up points that you missed out on because of the crash at, at Utah during the second race. How crucial is it for you to make up those points, and do you feel an added sense of pressure? No, I mean, luckily it was uh, me and JD that both missed out on points, and it wasn't just one or the other. So um, not even worried about it. I'm just, uh, you know, focused on today and, and uh, trying to get into that first corner good and tight so that nobody can uh, get around me. and and uh, just ready to get this race going. It's been a long but short weekend, and, and uh, I'm excited to uh, turn some laps. Thanks. Greg Jason sounds like he's ready to go. Uh, no yeah. doubt about that. And what he means by long and short weekend is it's it's been a compressed schedule, yep. but they've also had huge gaps off the motorcycle. <laughs> For those that don't know, when we come and ride with the world, uh, either MotoGP or World Superbike, our schedule gets thrown around a little bit. These guys weren't on track yesterday until 4.30 in the afternoon. So yeah. that's what Garrett's like talking Like all day. About they had yeah. all day. They were sitting and around. And I think his so. race strategy is going to be very interesting. And we can talk about that here in a minute. But I think that Garrett's race strategy could be, could be strange today. It, it, the one rider, I think, that knows how to race Garrett better than anyone is J.D. Beach. And he's with Hannah right now. That's right, guys. I've got J.D. Beach down here. And, you know, I just asked your teammate the same question. Only one race this weekend. How important to you is it to make up the points that were lost at the end of Utah's race because of your crash? You know, do you feel an added sense of pressure? Yeah, uh, luckily, after the crash last week, and I was still leading the points, but it, it, it's really hard when we just have one race during the weekend because uh, we, we really don't get much track time, and especially the, uh, this weekend here because the track's so short. Uh, there, there, there's a few of us that are really close in lap times, except for Garrett. He's going real fast, but uh, I, I think we found something in morning warm up, and um, I'm, I'm feeling good for the race. And I, I'm a racer, and I'm uh, ready to go. All right, best of luck to you, JD. Thanks. And Greg, I watched that morning warm-up this morning. He he was our quickest rider. He went six eight this morning. Yeah. Uh, and and it looked consistent. You got to remember these guys were the first on track. They there was more riders on track this morning than they have because they didn't split the groups. So for him to get some clean track and do that was good. All right, Hannah has one last interview and getting a chance to talk to Benny Salis, who we've heard of heard from before. But now it's race time. Hannah, take it away. So we were talking a little bit yesterday about your weekend. You're feeling really good on the bike and everything now that your health has improved after Utah's races. What's it going to take to maintain race pace to stay up front with those Yamahas? I think it's just a matter of riding at a limit where we haven't ridden before. You know, we've showed that our, our pace is good, but we're always about half a second off. And then I think that seems to be the case uh, again today. So uh, just push really hard and just try to hang with them as long as I can, hopefully learn a few things. You know, they have some pace on us, but we got a really good bike underneath us, so I think we can make it possible. Thanks, Benny. All right, so Benny Solis, that's interesting comment from him. Jason, yep. I mean, you're talking about riding. On, he's got to go past the limit, he feels. And for 19 laps. All right, so listen, this came out on RoadRacingWorld.com last night. When we talk about Garrett Gerloff's qualifying time, a 125.4, he was over one second faster than J.D. Beach. The implication of that, the old 600, like fast record on a 600 was a 26.5, so that's a tenth, but the, or a second, 1.1 seconds, but the outright lap fastest record on a 600 was actually on a Formula Extreme bike back in 2008 by Josh Hayes. Those were like 600 super bikes. It was a 25.7. So Garrett Gerloff shattered that by three tenths of a second, and he is just on another planet right now. So we hope, at least for race sake, that we can get JD Beach or JD, they found something they can get up there and race Garrett up, because like Garrett said, if he gets a clean shot at turn number two, it could be over for this field very early. We're going to take a break here on BN Sports, and we're going to get this race underway. You don't want to miss anything because tensions are high.
Moto America on BN Sports is presented by Dunlop and the all-new Sport Max Q3 Plus. Now you don't have to sacrifice mileage to get top performance. Dunlop Q3 Plus. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Welcome back to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca in Monterey, California. You can see the Super Sport Super Stock 600 grid is starting to be cleared out. And that means that we are just a few minutes away from getting things underway, Jason. And uh, it was quite a qualifying performance, I would have to say, by Garrett Gerlach. Yeah. That lap time was fat, 25.4. Yeah, you can see it here, 25.4 for Garrett Gerloff on the front row. J.D. Beach right next to him, Valentin DeBees on that front row too. And that's the guy I want to see if he can pull along. Benny Solis, maybe get a, a battle going there. If J.D. has found something to go with Garrett, it's going to be interesting. Daytona Anderson right there in the middle of your second row with Nick McFadden, first of our super stock qualifiers on the second row. Great job by Nick. Came back from that injury and uh, proving his show, showing some real uh, some real stuff here. Jason Aguilar, Michael Gilbert, Shane Richardson are in row three. Row four, Aston Yates, best qualifying of the year from him, as well as Andrew Lee, two young riders doing a great job. Alex Phyllis, son of Rob Phyllis. Wow. Uh, he's yeah. riding Envy Augusta here, so great to see him joining our series. Connor Blevins, Braden Orton, Jody Berry on row five. Row six, we got Brandon Cleland, Caroline Olsen. Good job for Gage Reese there, row six. As these guys get ready to go out for their warm up lap. Nolan Lampkin, JC Camacho, and Jarrett Jer Nesesny, and, and Mark Rhodes are going to round out our field. I think that uh, we've got a few more guys there on the list. We've got uh, Robert Pierce, Daniel Diaz, Jarrett Nassasny, uh, Ryan Harper, and Josh Picard yeah. all went through on our last chance qualifier. Just a, yeah, not too long not ago. Not too long ago, Just yeah. went through last chance qualifying race, the top five transfer into this race. Usually they get two shots at it. For those people in Superstock 600 that don't qualify on the time cut, uh, percentage time, of course, 107%. A couple other guys, just so people know, that might, might have some uh, fans out there. We got JC Camacho still in this race. Uh, Ezra Bobier, Cameron's brother, qualified also. Xavier Zayat, Andy Debrino. There's some other guys that we just didn't quite see in our graphic, but they are out there. They are rolling. So if, you, if you're watching us on BN, don't worry, we got you covered. Here's our Kawasaki keys to the race. Um, you know, first off, Greg and I have talked about a lot. Garrett Gerloff dominates qualifying. To put it in perspective, he'd be on the fourth row of Superbike. Now, what makes that ironic is those first four rows all had qualifying tires in Superbike. Purposely built qualifying tires. This guy's doing it on that new Dunlop tire that you saw uh, on our program here just a few minutes ago. So, uh, he dominates qualifying. Who's going to go with him? Surprise podiums. It seems like whenever we come to Laguna, we get somebody who's a surprise podium finisher. Who's that going to be? We've had the bees and we've had uh, Benny up there on the podium this year. Uh, is there anybody else that could be maybe be up there on that 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 podium uh, and be a surprise here at Laguna in front of all these world people and then super stock battle? It's going to be a big one today. Uh, we got Nick McFadden, Aguilar, Gilbert, Richardson, Ashton Yates, Andrew Lee, all battling. These guys are. It's going to be a huge battle between all of them. You know, I'm I'm keeping an eye on Shane Richardson. He hasn't won yet this year. Everybody else has. We've had doubles at every round. Yeah. Jason Aguilar being our latest. Are we going to have a repeat winner here, or, is it, or are we going to have a new a new winner today in Superstock? Four winners so far in the Superstock 600 class. Aguilar, Gilbert, Blevins, and McFadden all, like Jason said, doing the double. But that, no matter what happens, the streak is going to be snapped, at least for the moment, because we only have one race from Mazda Race Willa Gutaseka for Super Sport. So you can see an entirely full grid of riders here, all making it on the time cut, plus the five that transferred in from the last chance qualifier. The grid is formed up and we're ready to get racing. Left part of your screen, watch number one. Is he going to be able to get the launch he wants? Or can somebody else get ahead of him as we head down in turn number two? It's a good start by J.D. Beach. He's got to get out in front of Garrett right off the bat. And then he's got to hope that Valentin or Benny rough Garrett up. I think, you know, if he has found something, he is going to keep firing right back at Garrett if Garrett tries to go by. Now, the thing about Laguna Seca that makes it different than anywhere else is the roll speed. You're gonna hear us talking about that a lot. That this corner right here yesterday, Greg, Garrett Gerlach looked like he had five miles an hour. The oh, goes down no. right off the bat. Valentin to bees down in turn three. So, man, wow. it's just, that's the pace. The pace is being pushed. So that leaves H35 rider on that Honda CBR 600 RR, Benny Solis, to try to chase down these Yamahas. Oh man, this that is was so weird. I mean, that is that, not, that's it's, what you talked about. You know, Greg, that you say it's weird. That corner is just one that bites everybody. That yeah. corner is so hard, so difficult. You don't even feel like you have to be getting in there fast. 
and it can just happen so quickly. There you oh. go. Garrett Gerlach takes the lead. Now, we are going to see, is JD going to fire right back? Uh, Garrett Gerlach, likes, like we said, he likes to roll through these corners, and that's where his advantage has been coming. His four split, third and four splits yesterday were amazing, and uh, we are in that section right now. JD's got to see if he can do something with him real quick. He's got to fire back quickly, Greg. You see Nick McFadden back there behind Benny Solis. This is the advantage of having those split timesheets. So after each session, riders go back to their truck and with their crew chiefs and they look at all these split times. And Garrett knows exactly where he's putting in the most time over JD Beach, even from this morning's warm up. And it was that section of the track that he was trying to maximize. So JD Beach trying to stay in tow right now. A little tighter line to the bottom of turn number two. And it looks like Benny Solis starting to distance himself a little bit in that back battle as we saw what our first super stock 600 rider coming into your screen right there. Looks Nick like McFadden. Nick McFadden doing a good job. So right now up front though, it's Monster Energy, Yamalu, YES, Graves, Yamahas, and there goes JD Beach. He's gonna try him right here. That's what he's gotta do. He has to do that. And he's gotta just basically, you don't wanna see these guys come together again. And I use the word he's gotta rough him up. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm saying that he's gotta let Garrett, no, I'm not letting you go no matter what. If he lets Garrett get out in front and start just running the lines that he wants to run, and you can see Garrett setting JD up again as they come into the court screw. He's not able to get by. But see, right now, he's gotta slow Garrett up. That's what he's gotta try to do. Now, we're gonna be paying attention to the lap times just for you folks at home. They did a 28.6 from a standing start on their first lap. 26.8 was our quickest time this morning in warm-up. So what JD's got to do right now is do exactly what he's doing. Look at him blocking, Greg. See how long it's taken him to get back over to the right side of that turn? Yep. Uh, for turn 11, that he's just kind of running. This We've seen races, a lot of races, one like this. Valentino Rossi, Casey Stoner come to mind that year that Stoner was so dominant. Yep. And Rossi roughed him up the whole race. That's what you're going to have to see here from J.D. Beach. And when you're talking about roughing up, here's the difference. is J.D. Beach holding a really tight line through turn number two. Garrett Gerloff's, one of his strengths as a rider is his ability to roll through a corner with tremendous lean angle. And this new Dunlop tire that we featured earlier on in the show gives him that. Now we have balance is just out of our screenshot there, but, you know, it's weird. I, I mean, I hate to say it. I, I've crashed there a few times myself, yeah. and you just, you, you don't even really notice it. You just, all of a sudden, you're on the deck, and you know, what just happened right now, so. Back to my point, though, about Garrett Gerloff and J.D. Beach. There's a different riding style, and Jason, when you talk about roughing him up, I think what you're really saying is J.D. has got to disrupt the lines and the roll speed that Garrett Gerloff is able to take. Gerloff now up on the rear tire of J.D. Beach. J.D. getting it sideways. He's already been passed into the course screw, and he knows he needs to lead him through there. A 126.5, a 126.5, so not quite the qualifying pace that we've seen, but this is the way J.D. thinks. I saw him at dinner last night, and we talked about briefly race strategy because J.D. wasn't talking about lap times. He was just talking about how do I race my teammate Garrett Gerloff, and right now J.D. is doing it, and Garrett looks to be a little patient. Well, Garrett's got to be patient right now, and he's just got to... But the thing is, is that when he takes the lead, the problem is he can't open the door, Greg. And if he can't open the door, he can't run his line. So we saw the exit of Valentin DeBees. Whoop! Garrett Gerloff trying to go around the outside of JD. It looks like JD got on okay. the binders a little harder, but that'll stay the way it is. But we saw the exit of M4 X Star Suzuki rider Valentin DeBees just in the corner that they're coming up to right now. And Hannah, do you have Valentin down there? Yeah, Valentin has made his way back down into the pits. Valentin, why don't you tell us a little bit about what just happened? Um, I went uh, a little bit more wide, but wasn't. Uh, it was more or less my line. And um, I released the brake, and I crashed with no brake, so that was a little bit strange. But uh, maybe I make a mistake that I don't understand, so I have to watch that, look at the data and understand uh, what's going on. But. Um, it was uh, a little bit disappointing because uh, this morning I was feeling really great on my bike and uh, and was a really great improve compared to the rest race. So that's uh, that's bad before the holiday, but uh, that's uh, part of the race. Well, we're glad you're okay. All right, thank you. And wow, we just saw what wow. could have been absolute disaster up there in the course it? group. But see, this is what's happening. I want everybody at home to really pay attention to what's going on here because. Right now, what Garrett, what JD's doing is he's getting in, parking it at the apex, driving off the corner. Now, when they come up over turn one, 
Watch how tight he goes into turn two as they come up over the top of the hill. He's gonna beeline it kind of for the inside of the corner, just like he's doing right now. It's closing off the entry for Garrett to try to go underneath him. He's doing the same thing everywhere. Now, he's gonna have felt Garrett up at the top of that corkscrew that time. Garrett's getting a run on him through turn six and up the hill. Garrett right now has to get a run on him out of this turn, turn three, get a good run out of turn four, and then he's gonna have to try to get in the draft and try to duck out and do something with JD in turn five. But JD, see how he keeps the bike over to the left? It's making it real hard for Garrett to do what he wants to do. Here you go, Greg, turn five. He's in there too deep though. He's gonna probably run a little bit wide. Trying to get open that up for JD on the exit. See that's, and that's the pattern that you'll start to see by JD running the line he's running. Now, Garrett gets a great run through turn six. See, look at the drive. JD's gonna pull it back over to the left-hand side of the track. He's going to close this off and make it very difficult for Garrett to go underneath in the corkscrew. You can see Garrett there. He's not rushing it now, and that's really the big thing. Garrett Gerloff has definitely matured over the last couple of years in terms of how he views a race. And the question is, can J.D. get into his head and get Garrett frustrated so Garrett makes a mistake? And the other thing, of course, is what's J.D. doing to the Dunlop tires to really maintain this place? Hannah, what's going on with the Dunlop tires? Now, JD and Garrett are both on the extra soft rear, but something that um, might be interesting to see how it, ha how it unfolds as the race progresses is that Garrett's actually on a soft front um, and JD's on the medium front and both are on the extra soft rear. So we'll have to see how that kind of unravels as the race continues. All right, oh, perfect, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and, and that's that's good bit of information to see. I'm just, you know, this is the kind of race, you know, you heard JD say it the best, he's a racer. I'm a racer. He's not just gonna lay over and let Garrett just pull off and. Just, just collect your five points on me when you only be four points behind. Looks like Nolan Lampkin has gone down somewhere. Uh, maybe we're hearing is the top of the corkscrew. Looks like Gage Reese is involved in that also. So both of these guys are walking away. Uh, thank goodness for that. And uh, but, but what JD's doing right now, he's he's dirt tracking. This is what dirt trackers they like to get in there and block pass and do things like that. And uh, JD right now is just making it to where if Garrett's gonna go by, he's gotta do the long run. Now watch, pulling over to the left. Yeah, but there should be some flags waving at the top yep. of the hill, so that's gonna be... And Garrett saw that, it's yeah. a great call, Greg. Garrett saw that, it looks like there's a little of debris on the track, possibly gotta make sure no bikes have come across to the put gravel. See how, see how tight JD's going down in a rainy curve? These are all the places where Garrett was so fast yesterday. Here's a look at the aftermath of Nolan. the crash. Yeah, Nolan looks, looks like Nolan there. And Gage might be just up. Oh. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Nolan. <laughs> you can see there's there's Gage. Sometimes. They're, hey, they're both crashing in the gravel again. So, yeah. you know, good good that both these kids are okay, though. Hopefully they're going to be up and okay. And sometimes that happens. Oh, here we go. Side by side they go. And it looks like Garrett's got the inside line. A little wheel up in the air. Garrett's going in there pretty deep. Can, can JD get it stopped? He's going to have to square this corner up. Oh, wow, what a move by Garrett Gerloff. That's what he has to do. Now, can J.D. gather it back up? We've seen this at other times during the course of the season where Garrett gets ahead, then gets a little bit of a gap for a lap or two, and J.D.'s able to collect himself. So we'll see. This is the part of the racetrack. We're going to be coming up to the top of the hill here. He's just got to fire back immediately. That's the thing, and he's got to try to stay closer. The hard part is, if Garrett, see, now Garrett, see how tight Garrett went into five? Yeah. What did it do to his drive? Yeah, it definitely hurt him. It hurt him. However, we know that there could be still waving yellow flags at the top of this hill. So if JD is not able to strike at the top of the corkscrew. And, you know, looking at this, though, the thing is, Greg, is that if Garrett can't run the line, okay, now see how much he opened up the corkscrew there? He opened it up. He's probably going to have a little bit of a gap. See the gap now? Yeah. Now, Garrett, he's just got to try to put his head down, forget JD for a lap. He's got to just try to put his head down run where he wants to run. He knows he's got the pace. So now we're gonna be able to try to look at this. Garrett Gerloff, fastest sector three of his la of his race so far. 19 second split, he just went as fast as now. If he can get across this line and put a good solid lap together, we're gonna get a chance to see if he can pull away. This is the two guys coming down in through the corkscrew. Yeah, and you talk about different lines. Garrett just gets that bike transition so quickly. Another characteristic of that change from the 200 uh, with tire to the 180 that Dunlop has now for these riders is the ability to, to go from side to side, what we call flickability. And so Garrett Gerloff really loves the way that the new rear tire is able to get this Yamaha R6 from side to side. Yeah, and see, JD's just doing everything he can to go with him. And he's close, he's close, but he's not close enough to make a pass. See how tight Garrett is there? Yeah. Garrett doesn't want to let JD go through. He's just got to control that for a lap or two 
try to run where he wants to run. 26-4 for, uh, for Garrett on that last lap. He's just ran his fastest personal second sector, the fastest one of the race. We get a look back here at Benny Solis. He's about nine seconds behind our leaders. He's got an eight second lead over the battle for fourth, which right now is Jason Aguilar running fourth place on a super stock bike. But for Benny Solis, he's doing everything he can to get that fourth podium of the year on that Cal Adventures Honda CBR 600. Good ride by Benny Solis. Heard something there, you know? Yeah, heard something there. It sounded kind of weird. Here's a battle as we go back. This is it, Aguilar, Daytona Anderson. So 96 is Aguilar, 104 Daytona Anderson. Shane Richardson, the 26 in the mix, as well as Nick McFadden, Connor Blevins, Michael Gilbert. This is the battle for the podium except for Daytona Anderson. I mean, in terms of Superstock Super 600. Superstock, yes. So you'll notice that those red number plates. No, that's exactly right. Here you go. Jason went underneath Daytona at the top of the corkscrew pit. <laughs> Poor Daytona, he's stuck in the middle of five guys all battling for not only a championship, four guys battling for a championship, battling for a race win. And uh, he's just kind of right in the middle of all of them. He's running very fast pace also. They've gotten to the 28th, these guys. So uh, very, very close battle here in Superstock. Aguilar and the Aguilar Racing Yamaha. Daytona Anderson on an M4 Ridiculous Racing Suzuki. You go back to Shane Richardson. He's on the Palmetto Motorsports Team New Zealand. He is a New Zealander. He and his two buddies cruising around the United States racing. Number 16, of course, is Nick McFadden out of Owensboro, Kentucky on that M4 Med-Age Suzuki. A good look at the 37, Connor Blevins on the Excel Machines Racing Kawasaki. And Blevins a, third in the championship. And this is a great battle. This is what we've, the Superstock 600 class is so competitive this year. This guy here up front, he won the, he did the double at the last round. And uh, right behind him, Shane Richardson is the only one that hasn't won out of that group so far. Carolyn Olsen, the 43 in 18th spot right now. So Carolyn Olsen, Coming all the way over here from Norway. She's on the Mean Motorsports Yamaha. This is the 2017 version. A bike which she's only had underneath her now for three races. Yep. So she's still, still learning that motorcycle, getting all kinds of crazy setups. So she's our first place woman in the in the race right now. Not our only woman in the race, but our highest place in 18th spot. Yep, and, and she's got Debrino just in front of her, her. So here we go, Daytona Anderson's got a little bit of a run on Jason Aguilar right now as they come up over turn one, but he's not quite able to do anything. Right now, Aguilar's loving it. You see Michael Gilbert trying to go underneath Connor Blevins back there. Uh, as they head into turn two, he's gonna run it a little bit wide. Connor's gonna duck it back underneath him. See if Michael does anything going into turn three. Not quite now. Did you hear the rev limiter? There? I can hear yeah. rev limiter. When I went and watched this the other day, Jason Aguilar does something a little different than the rest of the Superstock guys. He comes out of turn two and just runs it on the limiter all the way down to turn three. So just a little bit different. Back to Benny Solis. Benny Solis is up the road from those guys, from that big battle. He's about 10 seconds up the road, Greg, from them. So Benny's got kind of a lonely race going right now. He's he's begging for a back marker. He wants to see somebody still on the track <laughs> with him right but now. But I have to give it to Benny Solis because he's been very consistent. His fastest lap of the race at 28-0, last time by a 28-1, only four tenths off of what he qualified on. So back up front, Garrett Gerloff has not really gapped J.D. Beach. They're in the 26s, flat 26s. Garrett, J.D. Beach has gone 26 flat, which is the quickest he's gone all weekend. So yes, him and his crew found something overnight. He's able to stick there now. So now Garrett's got a race on his hands. He's led for the last three or four laps. He's gonna continue to see plus zero on his board. The thing about Laguna is it takes a pretty physical pass when you got two guys this close together to try to do something. It's gonna take something uh, pretty spectacular to try to get by Garrett. So, but now Garrett's seen the plus zero. He's kind of been able to run his pace, run his lines, and uh, JD's back there making a plan all the while. Yeah, I'm looking at these Dunlop tires too, Jason. I want to keep a close eye on that front tire as Hannah told us that Garrett's on that soft and JD's on that medium. There's a little bit of gap there for Garrett now over JD Beach. Both of them on that same rear tire, but it doesn't really matter that they're on the same rear tire because if they work that tire in different ways, it could definitely feel a lot different as we start to wind the laps down here in this Super Sport Super Stock 600 race. Garrett Gerloff, Monster Energy, Yamalu YES Graves Yamaha leading his teammate right now, and this would flip flop the championship where Gerloff would have a four point lead. There's five points between first and second place, and JD Beach started this race one point ahead of his teammate. Oh man, almost 
lost the front there. That's going to help JD. JD's going to see that and give him a big, that's going to give him a big boost of confidence knowing that his teammate's pushing that hard. JD's trying to work something. He's going to cut it back to the inside, but not quite. Now, Greg, did you see what's coming up? we got back some back markers, markers coming up. And uh, we made mention of this earlier on in the broadcast that, you know, Hannah made a great point that, that these guys now are going to be coming across some back markers. Wow, that moment there. And Jason, I don't know if that was. Here's another look at it, Jay. Yep, just lost the front. Maybe touched the curb. Touched the curb, I thought. Inside, it looked maybe, like it know? was a little bit of curb action. So just that line. Oh, yeah. And yep, the bump. Sure. It was that yep. bump on a the curb as well. So that yeah. was that was just a little bit of an inside line, little turn it in early kind of thing. That's how good his Yamaha R6 is working, though. Here we go. Come up and on some, some back markers. It's Ryan Harper. It's Josh Picard. They got, out, they got out of the way, so that's good. Those yep. guys got out of the way nicely and uh, didn't upset the, the flow of what's going on between these two guys here too much. Garrett Gerloff now having his way in these late stages of the race, 12 of 19 already in the books as they're halfway through Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca at the moment down through Rainey Curve, named after the CEO of Moto America, Wayne Rainey. Of course, living real close to Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca. Wayne was here and he was like, hey, can we have five of these this next year? <laughs> so, yeah. Real close to him, yeah, easy for, close. easier for Wayne to get here for sure. So Benny Salis sitting in third place overall right now. So this is the battle for fourth on the racetrack. Also, the Superstock 600. And I talked to Jason Aguilar earlier on in the weekend. I said, Jay, you know, you, you've really done well. I mean, you've won the last two races in a row. Can you start going on a tear? And he just smiled at me and said, I sure am going to try. Absolutely, yeah. That's, you know, when you come off the confidence of a, of, a, of a win like that, it's a big deal. And you can see Michael and Connor have fallen back a little bit. Michael's got through on Connor, so I'm sure that uh, yeah, Michael might be trying to get by Connor has created a little bit of a gap. Shane Richardson from New Zealand. Shane with some big plans for the our off season, racing the Kawasaki ZX6R. They're actually gonna, they have a ZX6R 600 CC. This is the 636 on the number 26. They have one in New Zealand. They're gonna get a bike together and go race from October until the Moto America season starts because obviously it's winter right now in New Zealand. Yep. So Shane Richardson and his crew planning on racing nonstop and coming back here to Moto America for 2018 and race in the Super Sport class. So I hope they find some support yes, and we're able to see Shane Richardson on a Super Sport machine next year. So here it is, this is the story up front. We're gonna get another look at the lead. Last time by Garrett had that front end issue, but now he's really started to pull the pin on JD Beach. He really has, yeah. Then, then we'll look at the lap time here when they come by. Both the 26 fours, same gap, but uh, but that gap there's just a little bit. But we've seen JD do this before. Yeah, we've seen JD go back a little bit and then, chill a bit, then chill a little bit. You see that lap 12 there. There's where that 0.4 gap kind of formulated, Greg. 26.5 to 26.9. But we've seen JD do this. JD's not too concerned or flapping too much right now. He's just kind of knows he's still got a few laps to go. Might want to get a haircut after this because I'm just saying it might slow him down a little bit. That arrow. <laughs> a little bit extra just, back there. Uh, you know, if you lose by one one thousandth of a second, I'm just saying. I saw Garrett that time. He's opened up turn five a little bit more now. He's actually opened up that entry. And, uh, you know, he's kind of running where he was normally running. But, but JD definitely has found something and he's, he's getting this bike. Uh, you know, he's getting he's closing that gap now, Greg. There's nothing in it again. Fastest lap of the race goes to J.D. Beach, and he did say he found something, and from qualifying, J.D. qualified at 26.4, and the fastest lap was on lap nine at a 26 flat. So that was the last, not the last time by the stripe, but the time before that. So both riders setting their fastest times on lap number nine. J.D. in chase right now of the number one plate holder, Garrett Gerloff. Both riders on that Monster Energy Yamalu YS Graves Yamaha. And right now, it looks like Garrett, when he has his way, Jason, when he has the lines that he wants to pick, he's got the lean angle all, you know, all day long. He's just so smooth on the throttle. See how much JD's bike is backing in? Yeah. His bike is backing in just a little bit more than Garrett's. Garrett's just kind of, he's out there just kind of running his line. He looks very comfortable now. And I feel JD's doing everything he can to just kind of stay in touch. Right now, JD's biggest friend is seeing some people coming up in front of him. He's hoping somehow, some way that that you know he can get 
Garrett in a spot where he might get a little bit compromised going by somebody, and JD might be able to just put a little sneak attack on him to try to get back past. It just looks like in that section, the turn that we just saw, turn number five, that Garrett's just able to roll into that corner a little bit more, and JD's just trying to get the thing stopped. Right. Because on the flat section, turns three to four, JD is able to close that gap significantly. Agree, yeah, for sure. I, and I think that you're, you're spot on there, Greg. He, he can close in on the brakes, but the problem is, is and when his bike's backing in, he's holding the lever on until the bike, until you see it come back in line. And Garrett's rolling through at that point. And uh, just and different riding styles. It's a little bit different, but, it, but it, 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 I mean, obviously, both of them are very, very successful. Uh, there you go, back up to this battle for fourth. Overall, Jason Aguilar's definitely got a handle on this super stock field, though. Um, as you can see right now, Shane Richardson's just behind Daytona Anderson. But uh, right now, Jason Aguilar just ran his personal fastest lap of the race, actually two laps ago, 28.7. So he's been able to get into the high 28s right now. Coming down through the corkscrew, a good look at what these guys go through from left to right. 96 is Aguilar, 104 Daytona Anderson, oh, 26 Shane. Shane. All out of shape coming down the hill there. Oh boy. And the 16 of Nick McFadden on that M4 Medage Suzuki. And there's a good look at Benny Solis right now in third spot and Benny. He's dropped about a second in his time, but he, had, he probably had to get through some traffic there. But 28 flat, so. And he knows, Greg, you know, the thing is, is when you're in, this guy will never give up. He fights hard all the time. He's incredibly fit. Um, but the thing is, is that we saw what happened at the last race, what happened for the bees. And these guys up front are racing hard again, and who knows what's going to happen. But he's got to keep his head down right now. He's got a for sure podium if he just finishes the race. But uh, he's just got to kind of keep Plugging along, not doing anything silly because he's got such a big gap behind him. But Garrett, you know, now that gap's getting a little bit bigger, isn't it? Just a little bit. They run down into turn 10 here. This will signify three laps to go. So it's kind of at this point where if JD thinks he's got a shot at winning this race, he's going to have to start closing this gap if he's got the speed to do it. Let's take a look at these lap times because 26 4 last go around. 26 4, 26 4. So J.D. Beach, a couple hundredths of a second quicker than Garrett. Oh, look at J.D. goes in there sideways, just trying to get that bike slowed down and turn and make up some gap. But Garrett just rolls so well through those corners. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And I think that uh, right now, J.D., his bike, the way it backs in, Greg, it just hurts his corner speed a little bit. You see Garrett just runs out quite a bit more out over the curbing. And... Uh, just opens up turn three on the exit just a little bit more than JD does there too. But Garrett's kind of just running his own line, but JD's still sitting right there on the back of it. This could get really interesting. We, they know what's at stake here. JD knows the mistake that he made the last time we saw him in Utah, Utah Motorsports Campus. JD, after the crash, came out publicly on Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere, and apologized you know, to Garrett and to, the, to his team. But JD Beach is a racer, and he's not going to take what happened at Utah Motorsports Campus and not throw a shot at his teammate if he has it. Yep. He's not going to go crazy. JD's been in the game too long. But it, there's daylight. He's going to go for it. There's no question about it. That, that race was that race. That was a long time ago. So, you know, three weeks is a long time ago in a racer's world. You're only as good as your last race. This battle is just continuing to rage here between uh, Daytona and Jason. And uh, yeah, you're exactly right. JD's just gonna keep fighting over and over and over again. So the battle for fourth, it looks like Aguilar, of course, on that Super Stock 600 machine versus a Super Sport machine. One of the biggest uh, differences, of course, in those motorcycles is actually gonna be the weight, a Super Stock 600 bike. The minimum weight allowed is about six pounds heavier Oh, oh, looks like Aguilar. That's Aguilar that's crashed. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's it's not. a back it's marker. Back Excuse marker. us. That's a back marker. That's oh, Ryan Harper. Okay, I Ryan Harper's gone. It. Boy, it just, you, we heard Sorry, it. Folks. Yep, Sorry, we folks. Heard it. We heard it. Oh. We saw the smoke. So, unfortunately for Ryan Harper, he is out of that one. And sometimes you can lose your focus when you're getting lapped by a bunch of people. So, that happened early in the corner for Ryan. Probably just missed turning points just a little, and it flattens out on the left hand side of turn 10. And if you miss that camera just a little bit, that's what happened, so, but good to see him up and okay. All right, so Ryan Harper up and okay on the Moto Shop Yamaha R6 with two laps to go. 
The gap remains the same. There's a look at third place, Benny Solis, having a lonely ride on his own back in the 28s. So Solis, this is, a, you know, listen, this is the Honda Championship of Monterey Peninsula. To have a Honda CBR 600 up on the podium yep. would be spectacular for his team, for American Honda. I know that there's a whole host of people. The final lap of this race, and now Garrett Gerloff just sets the fastest lap of the race on lap 18, a 26-0. It's get serious time. Yep, and that's that's exactly what he had to do. All of his splits were a little bit quicker than JD's there. There's nobody that can really impede him. They see somebody just up in front of him, but they're far, you know, they got a big enough gap right now, Greg. He's got a big enough gap where he can kind of take his time and get past uh, anybody that might come in his way just a little bit. But uh, looking at the splits, JD hasn't been able to gain anything, and Garrett's just ran perfect last sort of say seven eight nine laps of this race so far he looks like he's coming up right now on brandon clayland who himself is running 18th right now and uh he's just getting out of the way so great job by him he must have got the blue flag 975 on the m4 xr suzuki out of fort worth texas getting out of the way and clearing the path somebody went really wide yeah, at the top this is of that brandon course. he's just getting out, he's getting out of the out way i saw jd yeah come in and uh unless it was uh, I, don't know, I hope it wasn't jd that ran wide now it looks like jd's right there Final two corners of this racetrack and the final lap of the only super sport race here at Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca. Oh, look how tight he's going into turn 11. <laughs> he doesn't know that he put the hammer down and walked away from his teammate, but he's going to do it in fine style to take his fourth win of the season. Your reigning champ, Garrett Gerloff, takes the victory here at Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca. It's a great job by Garrett. You can see how happy he is. JD did an awesome job, by the way, too, sticking in there for as long as he did. And uh, here comes Benny Solis down through Rainy Curve. It's a big deal for this team to be able to stick it back on the podium. And uh, a great job for them, especially like you said, Greg, that Honda's the main sponsor of this race. It's going to be nice to see Honda on the podium. Get it nice and clean through this final corner. And Benny Solis will dash to the start-finish line, take the checkered flag for his fourth podium appearance of the season, his fourth third-place finish. Boy, it would have been interesting to see them Oh, here we Big go. The battle thing. for fourth place, but Jason Aguilar has come up on Daniel Diaz and Jared Nassasti. And look at Daytona Anderson. He's going to try to finish fourth overall. Oh, he does it. Daytona Anderson scoots on by to be fourth place over Jason Aguilar. So Daytona Anderson might have just been playing a little cat and mouse game, but he'll do it. So congratulations to Daytona Anderson on that finish. Anderson, of course, last time we saw him actually finished third. So a good fourth place finish. Only a couple races now for Daytona Anderson on that M4 Ridiculous Great job racing system. For sure, I mean, he's getting used to that bike, but Jason Aguilar wins Superstock again. We've got our first three-peat winner of the year. And Caroline Olsen on the final lap of the race out of 17th place, throws that motorcycle on the ground, and that'll take her right out of that uh, points Oh, with two corners to go. Pushing hard, Carolyn goes down. That day and easy air suit activated though. It looks like she's gonna be up and okay. And that would have been about uh, ninth place in Superstock 600. So Carolyn Olson out of that top 10 points paying position. But JD Beach put on a masterful performance early. He showed us all how to race Garrett Gerloff but Garrett was just too much, too fast today for the 95. And that will equal up the tally between these two riders in terms of race wins. So podium appearances, I mean, this year, at JD Beach has four wins, three second place finishes, and two thirds. For Garrett Gerloff, four wins, four second place finishes, and only one third. And that's gonna be the difference on how the points are tallied up as Gerloff will take a four-point advantage in this championship here. So congratulations, Gerloff, J.D. Beach, Benny Salee standing on the podium in the Superstock class. It's got to be Jason Aguilar, Shane Richardson able to get second place again. Here you go. Oh, Jason just got, I don't know if he got held up so much, but he just wasn't able to drive off the corner the way he normally does. 
Daytona was just able to sneak him by just half a bike length. So good for Daytona. Never gave up. You see Shane Richardson coming across there. And uh, it actually looks like Jason just maybe got into 11 a little bit hot. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and he just he just wasn't able to get on the gas where he needed to get on the gas. And the difference between that battle, 0 0.033 of a second. Shane Richardson is going to stand on the podium, as well as Nick McFadden in the Super Stock 600 class. Great result here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to the winner of this race and find out how it went for Garrett. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, and this race is over as the Dunlop technicians take a look at those tires, and they're going to they're gonna mark them, take a look at them, because they're always about development of tires and making sure these riders can go around. And trust me, when a lap record falls at any racetrack they go to, even though Dunlop is the control tire of choice, the Dunlop tire technicians and the people back in Buffalo always have a big smile on their face. 100%. And the thing is, is that they're going to get data from those. And that's, you know, this tire that's been built is just based off of those guys being able to put, hey, that Benny Solis' tire, I saw the number on it. Uh, and they're going to they're gonna go and look at them. Well, it was an interesting race for Garrett Gerloff as his teammate J.D. Beach sure raced him up early, Hannah. That's right. I'm down here with Garrett. Another race win for you. It was a pretty crazy one yet again. You know, a lot of a lot of pushing from your teammate. You managed yeah. to really pull away there at the end. What was going through your mind? I I didn't even know I was pulling away. Actually, I uh, was getting plus zero on my board every lap. And I mean, JD definitely stepped it up in the race. And we were both, you know, trying to go fast. And uh, he led a few laps. And I kind of learned off him a little bit. And you know, tried to protect a few laps, make sure I could, you know, kind of run my race. And you know, by the end, I was uh, trying to go for it. And Made, uh, made a couple mistakes, but gosh, I'm, I'm so happy right now. I, I've wanted to win this race for so long. It's such a you know big, important race with World Superbike here and everything, and that's where I want to be one day is overseas and, and racing with the best guys in the world like I am here also. But um, really, I just can't thank my team enough for all of the hard work that they do in and out uh, every week. Um, just all these guys over here, Yamaha Extended Service, Monster Energy, Graves Yamaha, uh, just everybody that supports the team, thank you so much. And also uh, everybody that supports me, Showy Helmets, Cortec Leathers, CD Boots. Um, it's a great feeling right now. I lost my voice on that last lap just yelling at everybody, just pumped. So, um, yeah, and I just got to give all the glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thanks, Garrett. All right, congratulations. So cool. Garrett, so pumped, man. Yeah, I mean, everybody it, wants to win Laguna. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, just because it's Laguna, knows. but the big world stage like it is here at uh, the Honda Championship of the Monterey Peninsula. So Garrett Gerloff. Uh, he, he played that race just right. 1.5 seconds the margin of victory. Yeah, and he, he, 
you know, he's just able to get into his pace. But all credit to J.D. Beach for, for sticking in there. After qualifying, it looked like he was struggling, and his team went to work last night, found something to help him, and uh, great job for him uh, to stay in close. Yeah, Hannah, he gave it a good effort too, didn't he? I agree. J.D., you pushed really hard there with Garrett, trying to trying to really stay uh, on the back of him and, and try and make a move and potentially get in front of him, but you just couldn't get close enough. Talk to us about your race. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was r r racing a bike, so I can't be too mad, but uh, those kind of races are really frustrating. Uh, he, he, he's just had the pace on me all weekend, and uh, we were able to hang with him and uh, get and get in front for a few laps and I uh, just didn't have it today and uh, I, I, I kept on trying some different lines and uh, with a couple laps or I kept ke uh, catching them a lot go going into turn one on the brakes and uh, so for, with a couple laps to go I, I, I decided to back off a little bit going in so I could try to get a drive on them coming out of uh, turn one or I guess turn two and uh, that didn't work and he got a little bit of a gap on me because I, I, I was hoping I could get a drive on him coming out of turn two and then stay clo uh, close to him and pass him in, in, into turn five. Totally backfired. He got a huge gap on me and uh, we just didn't have the pace today, but I know my uh, Graves um, Motorsports R6 is a great bike and uh, we'll go to the next round in a few weeks looking to get a win. Thanks, J.D. You know, Greg, Jason, the sportsmanship between these guys is incredible. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, what happened at Miller, or at Utah Motorsports Campus is long gone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's been forgotten. Those guys talked it over. And like you said, he publicly apologized. And that's racing. You know, that's how it works. And, you know, Jason, looking at, listening to J.D. Beach's, com Beach's comments, you can see he's always thinking on that motorcycle. And that's I what a good it. racer does. Yeah, he was trying things. That's what you got to do. You don't just get set in your ways of doing one thing. And that's years of experience and practice and, uh, and so on. So, uh, And there's still eight rounds left, Greg. There's still four more races to go. Well... It is the Honda Championship of the Monterey Peninsula, and finishing on the podium on a Honda CBR 600 RR is Benny Solis, and he's with Hannah. That's right, it's his fourth third place finish of the season, the only Honda out on the grid. Pretty lonely race for you, you know, what was going through your mind? How do you just put your head down and stay focused? Well, uh, you know, it was a little unfortunate that uh, Valentin crashed because I was my goal was to hang with those guys. Normally, um, he breaks away from me a bit, but um, after he went down, it was just a matter of like see how close I can stay to the Yamahas. And I haven't checked the gap yet, but normally every race we're closing that gap, which is an improvement for us. And hopefully, we close it a little bit more. But as far as racing, once I was alone, I just try to keep my head down. I think I had like 10 laps within a tenth of each other, so that was really good for our race pace. Um, apart from that, it's just nice to be here in California and get a podium in front of all my fans, uh, all my personal sponsors who are here. Just want to give shout out to them. And then uh, a big shout out to all the guys at CVMA. I'm going to go to their banquet next weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing all my friends in Vegas. See you guys. Thanks, Benny. Yeah, another Southern Cowboy. and CVMA, you know, Jason? CVMA. That's, uh, that's, that's a great group of guys that we that, that race down in Southern California at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway. And uh, great club series, very family oriented. They're going to have their banquet this year in Las Vegas. So uh, they've stepped up things there. You can see the track day sticker on the side of Benny's bike. Those guys. Uh, are, are very kind to him, and, and, and uh, they're one of his personal sponsors, so it's great to see him being able to go out there next weekend. And Honda continues to prove how well their engineering is, as that aging CBR 600 RR is still a very competitive motorcycle. Well, there's more coming at you from Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca here on BN Sports, so don't go away. We'll have more in just a moment. So,
Every living special commemorative Nikki Hayden Dunlop hats will be Roger Hayden to J.D. Beach, to Garrett Gerloff, and to Benny Solis Jr. Special commemorative Dunlop Nikki Hayden hats. And making the presentation of trophies, also Roger Hayden, Team Yoshimura Suzuki, our third place finisher, Benito, Benny Solis Jr., Team H35 Honda. Our runner-up finisher from the YES Yamalu Monster Energy Graves Yamaha Team, J.D. Beach. Accepting the team award on behalf of YES Yamalu Yamaha is Chris Lessing. And ladies and gentlemen, your Super Sport 600 winner here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, Garrett Gerloff! Benny Solis Jr., another third place finish Another lonely third place finish. I know you'll take the third, but man, wouldn't you like to be running with these guys? Yeah, you know, ultimately that's a goal for us. That's why uh, when Valentino went down, it was a little bit unfortunate for me. I was like, damn, and I want to race that guy, you know, but um, it was good for us. Once these guys broke me, my concentration just had to go on my pace. I think I was looking at my dash. We had like 10 laps within a 10, so it was really good for our race pace, but definitely we're missing a little bit of time. Hopefully soon I'll race with these guys. But uh, anyways, my, my team supplied me with a great bike. All my friends and fans are here visiting. I want to dedicate this race to everybody at Chuck Wall at TV Main Series. I'll see you guys next weekend. Thank you. Benny Solis, Jr. J.D. Beach, you two guys have a way of syncing up the show and putting on a show at the same time. Great job. Yeah, Welcome back to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, and this is racing. the podium. As you can see, Roger Hayden good, handing uh, out those no, very special race, Dunlop uh, 69 yeah, Nicky Hayden hats weekend, to commemorate uh, Nicky Hayden. That's the Motul podium as Garrett Gerloff stands uh, on top. Racing. He's in the number one we're spot next to his teammate J.D. Beach, and a great ride for H35 Honda rider Benny Solis. So Roger's giving out the trophies, and again, Thanks to the Honda uh, folks at American Honda and the Honda Championship of Monterey to allow this to happen. As you can see, he rides for Suzuki. So this is the industry reaching out and showing the impact that Nikki Hayden had on the industry and the world at large. So a good, good job there on the Motul so cool. podium. Yep, very, very cool. Where everybody wants to stand at Laguna Seca for sure, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, great looking podium. Oh, look at Garrett. That's so it. pumped, isn't he? <laughs> He's oh, so yeah. pumped. He's not going to have a voice tonight. He's going to be screaming in his trailer. <laughs> yep. It's good. It's going to come down between those two guys. we got to spare a thought for Valentin to be. Hopefully, he's going to be back. And he's had a little bit of a struggle this year. But it just, it's because those two guys up front have just pushed the pace that much more. And the rider who finished fifth overall in this race and won the Super Stock 600 class is Jason Aguilar. He's with Hannah. That's right. This makes three in a row for Jason. Third, three consecutive wins. You did the double in Utah and again here. We were talking just a minute ago, and you said you've had some bad luck here in the past, but that doesn't seem to be the case today, obviously. Tell us about your race. Uh, you know, it was a good race. Got off to a decent start. I got a little bit cut off in turn one. I was in second in class for a while. I got around McFadden, and I just kind of raced my pit board, saw a gap, just kind of backed off a little bit so I wasn't pushing too hard. Bike setup was good, but I still felt a little bit uncomfortable at the front end. So I just kind of backed off a little bit. But like I said, I'm really happy to be back up here. And, you know, I've been coming to this track ever since 2005 to watch MotoGP. And Nicky Hayden won in 2005. So yeah, this one was for Nicky. He's been my idol all, all my life. So great job by Jason today. All right, congratulations to the Riders Law, awesome Aguilar Racing Rider, and a great dedication, too. Absolutely, and this kid now is taking control of the championship. He's doing exactly what he has set out to do. He's got some great people working around him, and uh, three in a row, you know, going into this little summer break, he's going to be going into it with a lot of confidence. Let's take a look at the race results for the overall Super Sport. It's J.D. Beach, 1.5 seconds behind Garrett Gerloff, Benny Solis, as you saw on the podium. Good last moment pass by Daytona Anderson to get that 33 hundredths of a second ahead of Jason Aguilar, Shane Richardson, Nick McFadden. Congratulations to those riders standing on the podium. Michael Gilbert just back there, another second and a half. Connor Blevins in ninth, so that'll mix things up in the Superstock 600 championship. 
Ray Nord, Ashton Yates, off of his best qualifying effort, will finish 11th ahead of Alex Phyllis, Andrew Lee, JC Camacho, Jody Berry, Caroline Olsen back there. So a good look at those final race results. And um, you can see on the right-hand part of your screen too, Jason, what Moto America is really bringing to the table. We have a mix of riders from all over the world. Yeah, and, we, and how cool is it to see Phyllis on an MV Augusta? Yeah. You now we got an MV Augusta in our thing, so we're going to have to look into that a little bit as we look at our, our championship right now. Garrett Gerloff takes the championship points lead with that victory today. He's got a four-point lead over J.D. Beach. But Valentin DeBee is crashing out. That moves Benny Solis up to third in the championship now. So 69 points back. Uh, Daytona Anderson, fifth. And then you got Aguilar, McFadden, Blevins, and Gilbert all in uh, close proximity. And these are the super sport points. Uh, they do get they do get a different uh, set of points for super stock. Brandon Posh, who we're hoping to get to see at some more rounds later in the year. Shane Richardson, Camacho, Braden Norton, Anthony Maziato, who also isn't here this weekend. I wish he was, but hopefully we're going to get to see Anthony again soon also. Well, we still have four venues left in this championship for the Super Sport. We have Sonoma Raceway coming up August 11th through the 13th. We go Pittsburgh, New Jersey, and then Alabama. And talking to Benny Solis, all tracks would suit the Honda CBR600RR. So it'll be